um, Pastor Femi was leading us. I thought someone better come and grab the microphone for him. Otherwise, there will be no point in me coming. He picked on unity. And that's what God has laid upon my heart. Sir. So thank you so much um, for laying that rock-solid foundation for where we're going tonight. It's important that um, we're united. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you so much, Lord God, for the power of your word. Thank you for everyone that has come tonight to lead us in prayer. It's indeed true that you are with us. And there's one thing that is unique to this gathering tonight. It's a united gathering. A combination of four parishes coming together with no other agenda other than to praise you, other than to pray to you. Indeed, oh God, this is befitting, oh God, and this is what your counsel is. And we are truly grateful that we are a part of it. Father God, I looked around tonight and I was beaming with smiles because I know heaven is smiling on us. Lord Almighty, as we look at your word, the power of one tonight, we pray that you give us insight, we pray for revelation, we pray for knowledge, and we pray importantly that these words would mingle with faith in our hearts and it would transform us. Give life to the words. Don't let it just be letter, but let it be rema that would really touch our lives and change us. So that by the time we're going home, we have something to hold on to that you have richly blessed us with, in addition to all that you have already done tonight, that we are in receipt of your mercy, and we are grateful to you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 So as I talk, your prayer is going to be, God, give me my own word. Let me hear you say it. Say, Lord, give me my own word. Uh -huh. So don't be like the woman who went to church. You know, when she arrived in church, she was the only one. So the pastor preached his house out. So at the end of the service, she went to the pastor and said, Pastor, ah, it's a pity that Sister Rose really wasn't here today to come and hear the message. So the following week, they were in church. Guess who was there again? Pastor and the same woman. And then he preached his heart out. And at the end of the service, he said, Pastor, ah, it's a pity that Brother James wasn't here tonight to hear this message. After the pastor had to call and say, you know what, sis, the other week when I preached, it was you and I. This week, it is you and I. Is it not clear to you now that this message is solely for you? Because if it was not for other people, they would have turned up. So look at your neighbor. Say, the message is for you. It is not for Brother Roshan that isn't here tonight. So just in case you think it's for Brother Roshan, it is for you. Uh -huh. So, because you know how we are, we, we dissect the message and then we are doing cut and paste. We cut it and then we paste. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. The fact that you are here and you are hearing the sound of my voice means that some part of the word is for you. It may not be everything, but there will be at least a word for you. Otherwise, I would not be standing here and you will not be sitting where you are sitting. The power of one. Quickly, Psalm 133, verse 1 to 3. Psalm 133, verse 1 to 3. It says, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that round down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garment, as the dew of Hermon and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. God talks about brethren dwelling together. In this house, who are we? We are brethren dwelling together. What we are doing is so unique. Four parishes coming together is not a joke. In London, I'm sure you know that everybody, four, even two parishes coming together is a big deal. Not to now talk of four parishes coming together. So God must have something fantastic. This is brotherly love in display. There's no hierarchy. There's nothing. We are just brothers in Christ. And God has a plan for us. The Bible says it is there. God commands the blessing. So the testimonies we have heard tonight is going to be nothing compared to what God is going to do. Just watch the space. Trust me. Just watch the space. If you think you've heard anything tonight, you have not heard anything yet. Because as we continue in this, as we continue to stand as one, not just here, but even in our homes, in our community, in our places of employment, as we continue to stand in oneness, you will begin to see the Lord command his blessing. He says it is like the anointing oil that is upon the head of Aaron 
and then it rolls down, all the way down. Now just imagine, if the rope of, and I'm going to talk about the garment of Aaron in a bit, and as to why God has linked unity to the oil and to the rope. Now imagine, look at what I'm wearing. If I really want the oil on my head to fall upon each garment, there has to be a connection between you know, all the garments. See, the minute there's a disconnection, so assuming for instance, I wanted it to go upon my dress, but my dress there's a gap. What will happen? When it gets to the end, to the edge, it will stop. It wants to go to the next feet. That's exactly what happens when there's disunity amongst brethren. So brethren, we must with every energy, we must with every power and every might that God has given unto us, fight vehemently against disunity. That's what the devil is doing. That's what he's doing. Do you know why ISIS is successful? They're united. They are doing evil, but they are seriously united. Do you know why the Muslims are growing by minutes? They are, they are doing some real growth. Do you know why? Because they are united. But what has the devil done to us as a church? We are divided. The Baptists don't speak to the Pentecosts. Pentecostals. The Pentecostals don't want to have any business to do with the Charismatics or the name all the different groups and all the different denominations that we have. Even in the family, the brothers don't talk to the sisters, the husband and wife, they sleep on the same bed, but they might as well be speaking Greek to one another. There's absolutely no link between them. And the devil is happy because he knows that for as long as that family is disunited, the dysfunction that will take place will be unimaginable. So please, if you are striving, if you are walking in disunity, do yourself a massive favor and deal with it. As in, when I say deal with it, as in like yesterday, not today. Deal with it like yesterday. Because the devil will steal from you. Bible says, where there is unity, God commands his blessing. He says, yea, oh how good and pleasant. Oh how good and pleasant. And as I was pondering on this this evening, you know, this afternoon, you know, not everything that is good is pleasant. And not everything that is pleasant is good. And God gave me some examples. So for instance, to exercise is good. Is it pleasant? No. How many of us like to exercise? You know, when I go on the treadmill, my heart is running, and then I'm sweating. Of course it's good for me. It makes my heart pump, it makes me fitter, but I know that it is definitely not pleasant. Particularly when I wake up and when I'm dragging myself and this train is telling me to run and my legs are saying, really? I can't really do this, you know? Now, something else that is pleasant but not good. I can decide that I'm going to have a bowl of desserts. Tell me your best dessert. Ice cream, chocolate fudge. You know, I can decide to have it for breakfast, lunch and dinner. Is it pleasant? Of course. Very pleasant, very delicious. But is it good for me? The dentist will be very, very happy. <laughs> At least they know that I will be donating to them one tooth per month. So they will be very happy. I will keep them in business. Do you understand? But the Bible says with unity, it is different. It is both good and pleasant. So if your family, maybe at work, you are living in disunity, or in your home, you are living in disunity, you don't have goodness and you don't have pleasantness. Do you understand? And the Lord's blessings cannot be commanded. Do you know why? Because when the blessing starts to flow, when it gets to the line of demarcation, what will happen? It will go back up again. There was a lady that had an issue, and the Jew stretched forth his hand to pray for him, to pray for her. He said, as soon as he laid his hand like this, he could feel the anointing flowing, 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 all the way to the tip of his hand, and then back again. How many people heard that testimony? Because the woman was living in sin. The anointing just kept, I can't remember which particular example it was. Maybe it was the woman that had boyfriends and wanted her to be pregnant. I'm not sure which one, but the anointing would not work. It kept going back until they had to go to God and find out, God, what is the issue? Now, beloved, please, God wants to bless our families in a unique way this year. But please, we must do everything to be united. I do an analysis of my life. If there are people that I am longer ahead with, I make conscious efforts now to go and sort things out. Jesus is coming back. If you are living in disunity, you, you guys are pretending to like each other, you are smiling, and you know that the smile is just 
plastic. Please, Jesus is coming back and he can read everything. Go and set me sweetly. Now, this is what the Bible says. It says, it is like the precious ointment upon the head of Aaron. Why did God talk about that special anointing oil that was upon the head of Aaron? Let's look at it. Exodus 30, 31 to 33. Exodus 30. Whenever God wants people to have a better understanding of something, he will always liken whatever he's saying to something he knows they understand. So he's talking to them. The psalmist, you know, he's saying, you look, this unity I'm talking about is like that anointing oil that was used for Aaron. And Exodus 30, 31 to 33 says, And say to the people of Israel, This holy anointing oil is reserved for me for generation to generation. It must never be used to anoint anyone else. And you must never make any blend like it for yourself. It is holy and you must treat it as holy. Anyone who makes a blend like it or anoints anyone other than a priest will be cut off from the community. God says this anointing oil that I'm likening unity to, unity to is very precious. It's very unique. It's very dear. What is God trying to say to us? Unity is very dear to God. When you live in harmony with your spouse, when you live in harmony with your children or with your family, it is not just to them. You are doing it as unto God. Amen? And God also didn't just liken it to the anointing oil. He likened it to the garment of Aaron. And I was saying, God, why? Why not any other, any other thing? Why are you likening unity to the garment of Aaron? Because God wants us to picture what every part of the garment of Aaron represents. And there's a text I want us to quickly read. Exodus 28. Exodus 28, verse 1 to 2, verse 4, and then verse 43. Exodus 28, 1 to 2, verse 4, and then 43. And take thou unto thee Aaron thy brother, and his sons with him, from among the children of Israel, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office, even Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, Eleazar, Ithamar, Aaron's sons. And they shall make holy garments for Aaron thy brother, for glory and for beauty. Verse 4. And these are the garments which thou shalt make. So please note the things I'm going to say. Next. These are the garments you shall make, a breastplate, an effort, a robe, a broidered coat, a meter, a girdle. They shall make holy garments for Aaron, thy brother, and his sons, and that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. Verse 43. And they shall be unto Aaron and unto his sons. When they come into the tabernacle of the congregation, or when they come near unto the altar to minister in the holy place, that they may bear not iniquity and die. It shall be a statute forever unto him and to his seed. God is saying, look, before Aaron and his sons, can come into the priest's office to minister. They must have this garment on. And God is saying to us, unity is likened to this garment. So let's picture that garment. What, what the Bible says is a holy garment. It's a holy garment, which means that the wearer of the garment must be holy. Without unity, you cannot claim to be holy. There are many pastors. You don't talk to that pastor. You don't talk to this pastor and you claim to be holy. There are many husbands. You don't talk to your wife. You claim to be holy. There are many children displaying the naughtiness you see their parents, disunited with their parents, and you claim to be holy. You are not holy. You cannot divide between holiness and unity. A holy person is a person that lives in unity. If you are living in disunity with whoever it is that you have to deal with, Please don't hold claim to holiness. And God says the garment, the first thing we know about it is that it's a holy garment. The next thing we are told is that this, there's a breastplate called the breastplate of judgment. The Bible said it is made of gold, it is made of purple, blue, scarlet, fine linen. It's of precious value and quality to God. Please note, unity is of great value to God. When God wanted to create the whole span of the universe, what did he do? Did he do it by himself? He says, let us. He called upon the Son. He called upon the Holy Spirit. And it was a united effort that produced you and I. Now, if it takes a united effort to produce you and I, trust me, it is going to take a united effort to sustain us. 
the devil is working tooth and nail to bring a division within the church, within the family, within the nation. Why is Teresa May failing? Why did she have to resign today? It's unity. Where there's no unity, she can't even function. In fact, I'm surprised she's lasted, she's resigned on the 7th of June. I'm surprised she's lasted this long. Because the house has been divided. The Bible says a house divided against itself. Will it stand? It cannot stand. So please, picture your family. All that fighting, all that boxing. I'm not talking to him. I'm not talking to her. I'm not. Look, you are, you are fighting against your destiny. You're fighting against yourself. The devil does not need to do anything. When you pray, don't bind any devil. Because if you bind the devil, you may discover that you are binding yourself. Truth. Don't bother to bind the devil. The devil, look, the minute there's disunity, first of all, sit down and sort it out. Some of you don't take it seriously. You're fighting, fighting this person, fighting that person. Two sisters not talking to each other. Two brethren not talking, quarreling over biscuits. And the devil is having a field day out there laughing, saying, I don't need to do anything. <laughs> they already doing my job for me. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. The Bible talks about the breastplate. The breastplate. The first place this unity strikes. Do you know where it is? The heart. Because if I don't like Pastor Dilly, for instance, now, guess what happens? When you walk into it, what's going to happen? My heart's going to be. Do you understand? That is the first place he attacks your heart. And the Bible says the priest must have the press plate. Guide your heart with all diligence. Don't let disunity enter into your heart. That's the first place. The Bible says in Proverbs 4.23, Guard your heart with all diligence. For out of it proceeds the issues of life. Don't allow disunity to creep into your heart. Now the Bible, we are told, on the priest... On the breastplate, there are four rows of precious stones. You know, I want to bother to tell you the names. Some of them I can't pronounce. Some is oinks, um, oinks, and you know whatever. You know the list. And the Bible says, on each stone is written the name of each child of Israel. You know, the twelve tribes of Israel. Those names are written on precious stones. Now, please bear in mind. Every child of God or every potential child of God is precious to God. Did you know that? So that's what you are fighting against. That's what, whether it is your family member or someone outside, that you are fighting against. Remember, they are either already a child of God or a potential child of God. There was a time in the Bible, God said to Moses, I am going to wipe out Israel, I am going to destroy them. Moses said, no sir, please, don't do it. The next minute, Moses got angry with the people of God. What did God do to Moses? He showed him. Ah. So because I wanted to wipe them out, does that give you the right to maltreat them and treat them anyhow? Please, the person that you are having that discord with, remember that the child of God. If you mess up with them, if you backbite them, if you malign them, if you pull them down, if you, if you behave in a way to them that d- d- discourages them or ruins their life, you will have God to answer to. Whether it's your husband, your child, your spouse, it doesn't matter. They're still a child of God. Remember, the breastplate has all those precious stones. The Bible tells us that the breastplate also has what is called urine and thunin. Urine and thunin. You know, it's being recorded so you can have it if you want it. It says it stands for light and perfection. Anywhere there's disunity, darkness creeps in. How many people know that? So the power of God's word cannot take effect in a disunited environment. I was watching the film today, I can't remember what it was called. One of these Christian producers about a woman who was um, impregnated several years ago and, well, the guy disappeared and then 10 years later, she's got this girl, you know, and then the guy, the guy surfaces. She didn't be well in the Lord, the prayer warrior, firebrand. But as soon as this guy surfaced, she lost it and decided that, you know what, 
she doesn't want to have anything to do with him because he's been to the same church. And before you know it, the, the sister who was a firebrand, burning hot for Jesus, you know what happened? The devil crept in. The devil just crept in. She started to stop going to church. And because she stopped going to the church, the devil just took hold of her life and would have ruined her completely. Why? Because she allowed unforgiveness and disunity to creep in. Brethren, I want to appeal to us. Where there is disunity, there will be darkness. Trust me, the power of God's word won't be able to take effect in your life. You will be quoting the promises, you will be claiming the promises, but because God has not commanded his blessing, then what will happen? It will seem as though the word of God is of none effect. But is the word of God of none effect? No. The word of God is life and powerful. But in a disunited environment, it won't work. That's why sometimes we call the promises and it seems as though God is lying. But he is not lying. Please bear that in mind. Bear that in mind. Very important. The Bible talks about the effort. Before a priest goes out you know, to minister, he always takes the effort. Because he wants to know the counsel of God. Where there's unity, there's unity. You can't hear clearly from God. Let alone know what the counsel of God is. Because you'll be judgmental. You'll be bitter. In an environment of bitterness, God cannot speak. There was a time, you know, um, the man of God wanted to, I mean, the king wanted the man of God to prophesy. You know what was going on. But because the man of God saw the king of Israel there, and he was already angry, he could not receive from God. He had to get a minstrel to come and sing and calm him down before he could hear clearly from God in an atmosphere of spite, in an atmosphere of discord, of bitterness. You will not hear from God. God may be shouting in heaven, you won't hear him because you are living in an atmosphere of discord. Very important. I'm almost rounding up. It talks about the meter. The meter is like a headrest, like a head wear that the priest will wear. The Bible talks about the helmet of salvation. Do you know the most sinister thing about this unity? Your salvation is at risk. The blessing can't flow. When you are disunited, your salvation is at risk. That is how bad it can become. I pray that God will give us understanding in the name of Jesus. It talks about the girdle that the priest wears. It talks about integrity. One of the things I know brings disunity is the lack of integrity. We need to go back to a place where we become men and women of integrity. So when you say yes, it is yes. When you say no, it is no. There are no gray areas. Please fight vehemently against disunity. The Bible says the priest also has a sash. And it says the sash is a symbol of the rank of office. So if you stay on your lane, and everybody stays on their lane, there will be no need for squabbling. So in the house, for instance, the man has his robe. The woman has his robe. I've heard people say, if he loves me, I will respect him. If she respects me and submits to me, I will love her. That is not what the Bible has said. It says, love, end of story. Submit, end of story. Everybody perform their own role. Because if you don't, the blessing that is flowing will not flow. It will be cut off and it will go back. Oh, pastor, but we are enjoying some blessings. Ah, it is only a trickle. God is just giving you a sampler so you know what the real blessing will look like. I want us to rise up to our feet. I want us to rise up to our feet. You will notice, I don't know if you've ever seen the robe. I mean, in the picture of a priest, you will notice that there are no shoes. There is no provision of shoes for the priest. So when he's walking in, he's walking in barefoot. Remember the experience that Moses had when God says, take your shoes off? That speaks of humility. I want us to go before God and humble ourselves before. Rise up. Everybody rise up. 
go before him and humble yourself before him. When there's disunity, humble yourself before him and say, Lord, every word of pride, every word of disunity in my life, in my family, in your church, Father, pull it down. If you know of anyone that you are in discord with, please settle it here and now. Don't leave it till tomorrow because as the saying goes, tomorrow may be too late. Ah, that sister offended me. She didn't come to say sorry. Say the sorry for her. That brother, ah, my mother offended me. My father offended me. Oh, they didn't come to make up. Ah, no, 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 I won't say, ah, no, 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 no. If I, if, I, if I let them go, they will do it again. That's not your business. You want the blessing of God to be commanded upon you. That is the key thing. He says, it is there that God commands his blessing. You don't want your salvation to be at stake. Please do something now. Be pray about it. Ask God to give you a large heart to get over whatever it is. After all, we all offended Jesus. We all offended God. We still offend Jesus. We still offend God. Remember I said to us, disunity strikes at the heart. Say, Father, please help me to keep my heart. Every word of disunity in my family. If you're in a family and you are at a longer head with your spouse, please settle it here tonight. Settle it. Don't be, too, don't be arrogant. Remember, the priest has no food to wear. That speaks to me. Don't put yourself before God. Say, God, I need help. My home is falling apart. My life is falling apart. It could be inside the church as well. Say, Lord, I need your help. Help me to walk in unity, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Help me to walk in unity. Remember I said God's people are precious to him. That person you're fighting against is a child of God. Don't let God fight against you. Where there's disunity, there's darkness. The word of God cannot take effect. You can't hear from God. Your salvation becomes at risk. Ask God, say, Lord, help me to walk in truth. Take me back to the place of integrity. Help me to be transparent and help me to, to know my lane. Help me to stay in my lane. If you are the woman, don't you stop your husband's role. If you are the man, don't take over your wife's role. Let every man stay in their lane. And Lord, teach us to walk humbly before you. And if you want me to agree with you, particularly in prayer over this particular matter, just wave your, just lift up your hands. I will see it. If you want me to agree with you, you want to be, you want to live in unity with whoever it is, and you are struggling. Just lift up your hands. I will agree with you in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, you can put those hands, and I've seen it, and God has seen it. Lord, I thank you for your children whose hands were lifted up who are struggling in the place of unity. I pray for the power, O oh God, to forgive. I pray for the power to forgive and to let go and to start on a clean slate, O oh God. I pray for reconciliation. I pray for unity, O oh God. I pray for restoration. And I pray that for as many who the devil has taken over their lives, that you will kick him out, O oh God. I flush the devil out, O oh God. And I ask, O oh God, the light of your word will prevail. The power of your word will be at work. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Yeah. Let somebody shout hallelujah.